bouncer. The bouncer looks at me. He's like, oh, shoot. Get inside. And slaps my ass. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Rise of the Comics. I'm your host, Scotty Aceman. Today on the show, we've got Chris Griffin, who is a champion in the comedy community here. Out of 132 comics, he won the Vancouver Yuck Off just this past summer. Chris runs a great room every Wednesday night, Corduroy and Kits, and I recently sat down and had a chat with him. Check it out. I just, I think, I don't have to fake that I love comedy or be like, ah, f it. Or I'm not sure if I'm supposed to swear, but like, you can cut that out. But be like, I, yeah, yeah. But like, just be like, oh my, uh, I got to do a show tonight. I'm never like that. I'm always like, sometimes I'm tired, but once I get here, it's something I look forward to, and a lot of my friends come down and do it. And I want it to. The ultimate goal is just have it where any headliner, whether they're from out of town or in the city, want to work on stuff or crush a showcase set, they could just come in, no questions asked. And it sort of turned into that. Start more and more, like the Urban Well was. I've never saw that, but I heard about it, and then. I actually saw Kevin Nealon at the Urban Well. That's about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you weren't alive then, or you were a baby. <laughs> I'm 35 years old. <laughs> old man, right. Uh, well, something else I wanted to bring up, because you touched on it. This is a quote. We're all just following our hearts. Be yourself. Never change. Dreams come true. Yeah. You know that you wrote that, and I don't think you're speaking to your audience. This is something very personal to you, isn't it? Oh man, it's a good question. I invented that quote. Just to, no, I didn't. But I used to. I, it's it's so weird because that is extremely important to me because I will. Uh, I sometimes I almost started saying it as a joke because it's extra corny. My good friend Chris Gordon bought me a, a follow your heart picture and then dreams come. It says it in my house. Like I have, but it, it's it's totally true. Like it's such a, uh, a annoying expression to just like if you just sit, have it on a throw cushion. But it's real. Like I really believe I mean I don't know what the dreams are like I yeah sleep on an air mattress and live in a garage but then I just open for Norm Macdonald so that that is for me like that's my dreams coming true and I think if you just do the thing you want in life and, and don't settle and push towards it I mean Donald Trump's president his dream came true to take over the world maybe no I don't think he has a heart uh, something else I wanted to touch on how do you get so tight with your observations of people and things around you. What kind of training do you have prior to starting six and a half years ago? What jobs have you done? Um, I mean, I used to be a writer, but I think all, I really noticed that as a stand-up comedian, and I think it affects people, because a, a lot of stand-ups, especially the great ones, are very sensitive people. But as you start to think about the world as a stand-up comedian, and uh, you, you really have to look at it from a different perspective. Well, it's your own perspective. You also gotta be objectively, you gotta understand all the different people involved, and you just start to see life and it, and it can have a toll on you I think mentally um, you know I notice a lot of comics have anxiety and I my anxiety I never used to have any and now it's increased but I think it's because you're just so in tune with the world you're looking at it in that way and uh, yeah I mean the, the, with just people on my Facebook and the way they react to the news the comics versus normal people it's, it's different but I think that skill is something which that is invaluable. That's what makes you the greatest comics. Like the way Louis C.K. can look at the world, or Chappelle's gonna be, you know, the way he does his thing. It's, it's, yeah, that's just a norm too. It's just amazing when I see them do that. And I'm only six and a half years in, but I, I think it's a. That's what makes a great comic is a way to look at a situation that's, you know, maybe scary or or some other feeling, and then make it funny. Make just take the spikes off and be like, this is really what it is. You know, yeah. Another comic said to me once. He's like, if you're going to somebody especially a small town to make them laugh it's like they're inviting you into their living room so if you're up there being like hey you if you went to somebody's house and just started yelling and talking about your opinion people are like man who's why did we invite this guy but if you kind of sit down and get to know them and then be like hey cool this is what you guys do here's my side of the story and it's just a, a natural way I, I think it's a survival strategy I mean, you're playing a, a huge theater in the states I don't but they're all all deep down it's, they're similar things I think that that does transhumanity. So maybe that's how I deal with it, but yeah. Now, before we let you go, Chris has a show to run. <laughs> uh, are you ever satisfied with your performance? Uh, never. Like, sometimes I, I will have a good set, and I'll be like, that's good, but I'll still, I just, and it's so hard, I get, you know, like, I, you know, doing that Wego and Norm, you see that, and you're just like, oh, man, I still have so 
far to go. So no, never, never. I'm satisfied if I do a new joke and I challenge myself and it goes well, but for a minute, and then I'm like, all right, let's make that better. And even my best jokes, there's very clear points that are weak, but I don't know, so never. I don't know. My goodness, Vancouver. My name is Chris. I am originally from Calgary. Well, see you later, dick. No, I get that. I didn't know. I moved here years ago, but when I, before I moved, I didn't realize that pretty much the entirety of BC just hates Alberta. Hate, and it used to make me so mad. I'd get so upset to be like, you're all rednecks. I'm like, no, we're not. But I have to go back a lot for comedy. And even my best friends are like, oh man, I got super wasted last night. Fucked up, slept in the dumpster. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Just give me a break for two seconds. But it's, it's good that people are drinking because where I come from, that's life, man. Booze is everything. That's how you make friends, right? You're just like, yeah, hey, yeah, right? Yeah. It's how you fall in love. You're like, yeah, 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 man. So you start a family. You're like, yeah, yeah. Forget to pull out. <laughs> it's how you raise your kids. You're like, have a shot, you little shit. Everything is booze. I moved to Vancouver, I'm like, I got no friends, let's make some friends. So I go to the bar, I'm like, pictures for everyone, shots, let's get fucked up. And everyone's like, whoa, man, calm down. Carbs. I'm gonna die in a fuck. Dick. Damn it. Like, just have some quinoa. And a key bump. There's the coke guys. But uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I'll tell you a good story about Calgary, though, because I have uh, my one friend, uh, his name is Brandon, and he's gay. I'm from Calgary. And I love saying that sentence in Vancouver versus Calgary, because I say it here, I'm like, he's gay. And everyone's like, oh, and I'm like, from Calgary. And they're like, fuck. <laughs> what if I say it in Calgary? I'm like, he's gay. And everyone's like, ooh. And I'm like, from Calgary. They're like, yeah, butt angle flames. <laughs> <laughs> So last time I'm there, uh, I'm doing a show. Show ends at 10 p.m., me and Brandon, and we have a house party at midnight, so we got two hours to kill. So I'm like, man, what do you want to do? Do you want to grab a drink? He's like, do you want to go to the gay bar? Now I'm straight, never been before, but I heard good things, and I fucking love dancing. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. He's like, all right. So we go, we pull up, the lineup is around the block, right? I got negative right away. I'm like, fuck, this is gonna take forever. He's like, no, trust me, we get in the line, it moves like at walking pace, like it's like fast. So he's like, get your ID ready. I fumble it out just in time, give it to the bouncer. The bouncer looks at it, he's like, oh, cute. Get inside and slaps my ass. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good start, yeah. We, we go in, Brandon's not drinking, he goes to dance. I go to the bartender, bartender's there. I'm like, hey man, I want a double vodka Red Bull. I'm getting into it tonight. And he's like, yeah, and he leans over the bar and like pets my beard like this. And he's like, hey, I haven't seen you here before. I was like, no, it's, it's my first time. He's like, well, I'll tell you what, first drink's on me. I was like, what magical place is this? Said I'm getting a free drink and my ass smacked already. Like, this is nuts. I go to the dance floor, it's better than I imagined. Like, the lights, the music, it's crazy. And as it comes into focus, I realize you're allowed to take your shirt off. <laughs> I love taking my shirt off. I took it off, people cheered. I'm like, this could be the best night of my life. Like, but then I saw there's like this glass cube, like raised, it's like a shower stall raised up. But there's no water in it. There's just a wasted chick inside just dancing. She's like, yeah, and then the bouncer comes up. He's like, hey, honey, you know the rules. Only dudes allowed in the cube. And takes her dance. So I tapped his shoulder. I was like, wait a minute. Are you saying that I <laughs> could go dance in the cube? He's like, no, I'm saying you're going to. And he lifted me up. Like I was a child, like my legs were like this. And he threw me in and I started dancing. Like, yeah, the whole place goes nuts. I'm like, this is the best night of my life. <laughs> Number one, no questions. I come down right away, a dude comes up to me. He's like, hey man, I gotta say, that is my favorite look. Like where you work out, but you're still not in shape. <laughs> Good call. He's like, but you got nice eyes and here's a drink. I'm like, yeah, you're back in. 
So he's like, he's like, hey man, my name's JJ. I'm like, hey JJ, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. And he's like, hey Chris, uh, nice to meet you too. He's like, time for the big question here. Big question. He's like, okay. Now based on the voice, I would say straight. But he's like, based on those pants and that dancing, super gay. What is it? And now I didn't want the drinks and compliments to stop. <laughs> so I lied. Like, you know what I mean, ladies. So I lied like a little bit. I was like, well, I'm both. And he's like, gay and straight? I was like, yeah, just all of it. And he's like, oh, like a buffet. You pick and choose what you want to do. I'm like, yeah, just like that. He's like, that's amazing. He's like, how about we go downstairs with some couches down there. It's a little more quiet and intimate. We can get to know each other. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to tell another lie. But at that moment, I saw my friend Brandon dancing on the dance floor. So I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm in a relationship, and that's my boyfriend. But as I said the word boyfriend, Brandon starts making out with the dude he's dancing with. <laughs> so JJ's like, that's your boyfriend? I'm like, ah, fuck, so I'm trying to tell another lie. Before I could do anything, he's like, hold on. He's like, Emilio! And he calls over this Latin god, like this <laughs> handsome man, just tanned, in shape, like slick hair, just like a jawline you could rest your feelings on. Like, so <laughs> beautiful, man. And he's like, Emilio, this is Chris, and that's his boyfriend. His boyfriend's making it all I'm like, no, no, JJ, Emilio, you see, you guys, you don't understand. This is my next lie. I was like, see, I'm bisexual, okay? So I bang dudes and chicks. Brandon, my boyfriend, just straight gay, only bangs dudes. He knows I like to bang other chicks, so he lets me bang other chicks. Because of that, I let him bang other dudes, but I don't bang other dudes. <laughs> that was my... And he's like, you don't get to be a part of that? I'm like, well, it's never really happened exactly like this before. And he's like, I don't know, sounds like bullshit. He's like, we're gonna talk about it, but first we're doing some shots and some drinks. And I was like, Fuck yeah, like, what is it? So we go, meanwhile, Brandon has no idea what a lying piece of shit I am this whole time. So he comes running over, holding hands with the guy he's making out with. He's like, hey, Chris, I hate to do this to you. I'm gonna have to meet you at that house party. I'm gonna go have a little bit of fun first. He's like, it's really close. You can just take a cab there. I text you the address, five minutes. See ya, bye, and leaves. And Emilio's like, what the fuck, man? He's like, here, take this pill. And now my night is crazy. Like, I just love everybody. I'm feeling things. I'm like, this is good. I was on the dance floor. The DJ said my name over there. like, Chris Griffin's in the house. I'm like, holy fuck, how does he even know my name? I felt like Kanye West, man. I was like, this is nuts. I was on Emilio's shoulders, but backwards. <laughs> Two hours later, we're back downstairs on the couches, me and, me and Amelia. No, I had my shirt back, separate couches. And then, uh, and meanwhile, Brandon's texting me from the party. He's like, Griff, you gonna make it down? I'm just lighting him up. I'm like, you don't deserve me. He's like, what the f <laughs> But then Emilio's like, hey man, I gotta tell you uh, something. He's like, uh, uh, he's like, you know, I lived my whole life as straight until two years ago, and I finally came out of the closet. And when I did that, life was better, and I feel good about it. And I was like, oh, f now I gotta tell him like I'm a huge liar. And yeah, I know, but before I could do that, he's like, I'm gonna tell you something else I've never told anyone. He's like, I have never sucked a dude off to completion. And I was like, me neither, which I think <laughs> was the first truthful thing I said the whole night. <laughs> but then he gets up off his couch, comes over to my couch, and he grabs my head to kiss me. And for a second, I was like, maybe, because he was very handsome and in good shape. But right before his lips touched me, I was like, no, I can't. And I threw him onto the other couch and I just ran out of the club. I was like, no, onto the street. I was like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not gay, I can't, I'm sorry. And then I saw my reflection in the window. I'm like, that's the gayest shit I've ever seen a human being do. But for anyone who says it's a choice, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here in Vancouver, but goddamn, I know for sure it is not because I was drunk and high and Emilio was handsome and in great shape and I was gonna get a blowjob to completion! I was like, no, oh, Hey, thank you guys, I'm Chris Griffin. What a night. So, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. How long have you been doing comedy? Well, I, uh, I used to be an engineer, and then I got... That's funny. Yeah? 
And then I got a concussion. Okay. So now I'm a comedian. Yeah, I mean, I've always had a hint of darkness to my comedy. I mean, I grew up uh, unorthodox. Uh, I had a rough upbringing, so when that happened, uh, it was hard at first, but then a few months went by and I'm like, all right, let's use this. Let's make this funny. So I have used it on stage. I used it on stage actually here at the competition last year. So. I mean, comedy is just a beautiful thing. I, I think that the comedy is always the first step forward. Uh, if, does that make sense? Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch comedy from five years ago, you go, oh, geez, they were ahead of the curve, weren't they? I think we help people understand what's coming or what's changing and by doing it in a funny way so they can receive it easily. So people are getting their news from stand-up comedy. Yeah. So support live stand-up comedy. Support That's what comedy. we're saying. I was reading up on you earlier that that you are voted by the Georgia Strait almost every year as being the best comic in the city. How is that possible? Who are you sleeping with at the Georgia Strait? I think it's been one year, so <laughs> it's not really that big of an accomplishment. <laughs> you make it sound like it's been like 50 years. I'm trying to make it look really good, yeah. <laughs> it's been one year. <laughs> nice, okay, it's one year. Now, I know you're, you're fairly big on uh, Twitter. And I read that you have had some tweets that were shared on Jimmy Fallon, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you remember what some of those tweets were? Uh, it was one where I went by the drive-thru and I uh, ordered my order to a garbage can. <laughs> and the other one was me uh, talking crap about my wife's work. We're at the bank. I uh, set my password something completely inappropriate. So and did that get kicked out of the bank or? Uh, well, it was an awkward resetting passport situation, so. <laughs> Sounds boring as hell, actually. <laughs>was somewhere between 10 and 15 performances this week while yeah, you're in Vancouver. A lot of shows. Tell us about them so far. Oh my god, so many great moments, panties, bras <laughs> flying. That was the airport. And then uh, no no, it was the show's been great. Uh, I love Vancouver, love coming to Vancouver, love doing shows back in Canada. I make sure to come back as often as I can. So, it's nice. Good. Yeah. Nice. Also, I discovered that it is literally a 10 year anniversary for you where you've been performing professionally yeah. without the need or requirement of a day job what does that mean to you that means i've learned to live in fear for 10 years <laughs> i've learned to, to deal with not knowing what's going to happen month to month it's exciting guys <laughs> oh financial role no it's been good uh it's uh it's i think in show business, if you can say that you live off what you love to do, you've succeeded, so I, I'm very proud of it. Well, I think that's big congratulations. Yeah. You also are quoted online as stating that you idolized Jim Carrey, a brilliant Canadian comic. Okay. Have yep. you met him? Can you tell us a little bit about your thoughts of what attracted you to his style of comic? Well, I love Jim Carrey uh, growing up because he was from Southern Ontario, like myself. Grow, I grew up in Toronto. He started out in Yuck Yucks as well, like myself. Uh, and I think I loved him at, in, in Living Color, first of all. And then I watched his stand-up, and I was like, wow, he's even funnier by himself, which I thought was incredible. And then uh, I was like, I'd like to do that. And then my comedy is nowhere near as physical and as out there as he is. I look at him almost like, a, like how I would look at an athlete, like, well, I'd love to be able to jump that high or run that fast. But 
he's uh, definitely an inspiration that some guys can, uh, you know, he was the first guy to me that, wow, really made it and out of Canada, and that was, that was it was a big inspiration. Well, right now, I'm just working the stand-up circuit in Los Angeles. My podcast, Barely Friending, is doing really, really well. I've been opening for Harlan Williams, very funny Canadian uh -huh. as well. He, he's a close friend. We've been working uh, on some stuff in Los Angeles, and uh, things are going well. I hope you guys enjoy the show. There's lots more coming up, so I hope you'll join us next time on Rise of the Comics. I'm your host, Scotty Aceman. Until then, get out and enjoy some live comedy.